<laughs> um, these three poems happen to be from my friend in Bulgaria called Amelia. The first one is called <laughs> Poems. She asked me why I haven't I published yet. This is my, my poems are at that difficult stage, teenagers, that sit around in my mind all day, do nothing except lying there. I remember when I gave birth to them, they were so cute, now they're just mm -hmm. so annoying. <laughs> Nothing biscuits over the computer, so the crumbs get stuck between the words, leaving the dirty metaphors scattered all over the sofa, borrowing my similes without telling me, corrupting words too young to know better. I long for them to leave home, go find a book of their own, live in a little poetry magazine or the tip of somebody's tongue. <laughs> Instead, they go to all night raves, stagger home, their adjectives all wide eyed, their nouns intoxicated. I just hate it. Misquoting themselves or thinking they were written by someone more famous. We wish we were an alien baby, they scream and holler. <laughs> well, you wait! I scream back at them, screaming back at me! So now I've left my brain upon the coffee table with the dirty magazines, so welcome to it. I've given up the ghost. You'll be back, they boast. Don't use that easy rhyme on me. I laugh at them floundering now, not knowing where the next line is coming from. <laughs> Poems who need them. <laughs> it's called Off the Wall. The man emerged from a wall, stood there halfway in and halfway out, froze when he saw me. Sorry, he said, I'm not used to being dead. And it's hard to get used to this kind of travel. Usually only little kids notice me and smile, ask their mams that they can go play with the man in the wall, and their mams give them a smack and say, don't do that, you're freaking me out. Ouch, the kids say. I'm a poet, I explain. Oh, that would explain it, he laughed. You're just as likely to make me up even if I didn't exist. It's not to exist on this level of non-existence. I'm sure you will get used to it in time. Oh, I'm sure I will, I will, but time is so immaterial to me now. Just need a little more practice of being a ghost. Listen, could you be a real pal and pull me out of this wall? I'm very betwixt and between at the moment. I asked him if he would like to go and have a cappuccino, so we sat at an outside table. It was such a lovely day, he and me. He living his death, I living my dying. People saw me talking and gesticulating to myself, but they passed it off thinking I was just a poet. <laughs> And then I thought in the future what will be remembered of me, of course. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> so this is called From My Past I Smile. Um, I read someplace that they have in Edison's, Thomas Edison's museum, they have a file of his last breath. So when the poor fucker is dying, somebody goes, quiet. <laughs> 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 Think he'd be doing the last right, comfortable, putting sweat off as far as the nose, you're catching his last breath. <laughs> so that's what I wrote it. From my past I smile. In the future that will know nothing of me except this poem and a few traces of me. A guide will show you my first kiss and how it continues to exist, although the place and its participants no longer exist. A striking example of the phenomenon of the persistence of memory. A guidebook will inform you and direct you to the places where I cried, here, here, and here. Be sure cried a lot, future tourists will observe and take a single snapshot of a solitary tear preserved in aspect. Why did he cry, a future child will ask, but this fact will be forgot. Then, here is a glass jar of his actual laughter. The reason is not now known. Here is a glass file of his last breath. There is an audible gasp of, <gasps> is it? But it is obviously faked. Is that it, the pain in the neck complains? Is that all there is for the plethora of cameras around his neck? Jesus, poets don't leave much to remember them by. They sure make lousy museum pieces for my past and a smile. <laughs> a clock ticks, a vase reflects upon itself in an enormous ornate gilt mirror, admires her own flowers and how they are arranged. A fire spits sparks, sending shadows scuttling up the walls. A coal scuttle is either half empty, half full. A clock strikes nine and chimes slightly ahead of the real time. A picture, quaint and antique, hangs slightly askew against the horrid wallpaper and its unattractive roses. A record, an old shellac, 78, has found a scratch and keeps returning to it, picking at the musical phrase like a scab. Caruso's got, got hiccups. One mirror gazes into the face of another mirror, both enamored of the other, seeing only themselves. 
An undrunk cup of tea cools steadily, leaving a thin skin on top. A sugar lump has come to rest on a small Turkish carpet depicting the delights of paradise. A moth falls madly in love with an old flame, but it soon fizzles out. The only thing living in this room is an old tattered tortoise shell cat asleep by her master's stocking feet. So deep she hasn't even heard death enter and leave. A clock ticks. Thanks. Thank you.